Oh yeah. Ready for some weird ass butt kicking critters? You'll get that and a whole lot more, cause it's maximum exposure. This time around, bees suck face. Nature Boy gets all bucked up. Alligators leave sewers and move on up to Brooklyn. Hey man, don't put that in your mouth. You don't know where it's been. Oh yeah, you do. Chimps go absolutely ape Plus a raging ball of teeth, claws, and spit. A dude gives an alligator the finger. A little girl gives a snake a hand. And Senator Ted Kennedy hosts a very special happy hour. It's a world of trouble with nasty, nasty critters. If you're like most guys, you kind of enjoy being covered with thousands of bees. Yeah, but that's kid stuff. Real bee guys are always thinking of what other kind of weird stuff they can do with bees. Dr. Norman Geary is a real bee guy. Watch and learn, amateurs. I thought, well, why not train bees to do something weird, like fly into my mouth? No one has ever done this before. Well, can't argue with you there. So what's the secret of getting bees to fly into your mouth? First, mix sugar and water. Next, soak a sponge with a sweet solution. Shove it in your mouth and let the fun begin. Now the goal is to pack as many bees in your mouth as you can without getting stung. My biggest concern today is that uh, too many bees will suddenly enter my mouth and fill it so full that I can't uh, close my mouth or breathe properly. Oh, that's it. No room for any more. Now comes the best part. He closes his yapper and enjoys the feeling of having a beehive in his mouth. Out they go. So, Doc, just out of curiosity, how many bees were in there? All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Well, we'll just move it along and we'll tell you there was 109 bees. Yes, I was surprised because uh, I didn't think my mouth was that big. What about the thousands of bees that didn't make it into his mouth? Where'd they end up? Yeah. That's why you have a loyal assistant. Yo, Vinny, check this out. This Brooklyn apartment is crawling with cops. No, 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 we just arrived yet. Whoa, they need backup. What the hell is going on in here? Uh, I'll tell you what's going on. This place has an alligator problem. Someone turned their two-bedroom apartment into a gator ranch. New York's finest are trying to rope the gators and put them in ventilated garbage cans. Problem is, they don't know from gators. Oh, you got his foot? I got his foot. Good. So, how many cops does it take to catch one gator? Never enough. One by one, the gators go down. They're caught, packaged, and hauled away. Of course, the crowd is gathered outside, and they're just loving it. Big one? What big one? Whoa, that big one. And he ain't going out in no stinking garbage can. Finally, after a long struggle, the guys in blue have their gator. And the six gators are on their way to the Bronx Zoo. Hey, you gotta love New Yorkers, huh? They may not know they're critters, but they're ready to protest. Most snake guys enjoy wrapping snakes around their head. But real snake guys like Carlos Medina like putting them in their mouth. Carlos is the snake man of El Salvador. He's got hundreds of them. And he doesn't have to go very far to find them. 
Whenever he needs a snake fix, he just goes outside and catches him in the wild. From the moment I bring them close to my neck and face, I am giving them trust. I'm giving them love. Oh yeah, it's a regular love fest inside the Medina home. Everyone gets in on the act. His kids can't get enough of the snakes. This is just as normal as if you have a little dog or a little rabbit. Well, yeah, except your dog or rabbit ain't gonna strangle you. There's one upside to owning snakes. As everybody knows, mm -mm, snake is mighty good eating. <laughs> Dean Stratton knows all the deer in his neighborhood. And they come on over when he calls. We got a big old buck coming in here right now. This here is Bucky. I know him all by name. Now, what did the deer think of old Dean? Well, not much, really. He's just not that popular. Okay. The deer has Dean pinned against the fence and is trying to gore him. Notice that the only other person out there with Dean is the cameraman. Does he jump in? Nah, he just keeps the camera rolling. Excellent. Dean breaks free and tries to defend himself with a flimsy piece of fencing. Well, so much for that idea. The brawl spills out of the pen and onto the road. Finally, Dean gets the deer in an antler lock and subdues him. Oh, the deer ripped his new acid-washed jeans. No, Dean, come on, no, not the rifle. Okay, look, don't send us letters, animal lovers. That was actually a tranquilizer gun. Well, we can't do that again. No, Dean, you can't. That's right, Critters Bite. Coming up on Maximum Exposure. Hey, don't kid yourself. Your cat hates you. Okay, guy goes into a psychiatrist's office with a monkey on his head. Monkey says, hey, Doc, can you get this guy off my butt? Meet the man who loves his animals way, 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 way too much. And the chimp proves he's almost as dumb as a man. Monkey see, monkey throw doo-doo. And the biggest pussy cat you'll ever see. And if you still think animals are cuddly and sweet, stick around for our Max X list of nasty, nasty critters. It's raining cats and dogs and chimps on Max X. Back with maximum exposure. Nasty, nasty critters. A legal note. We regret any confusion this next story may cause. We apologize to England's Queen, Prince Charles, and all your royal subjects. Yeah, not really. <laughs> this just in. A shocking videotaped blackmail note from England. It reads, <clears throat> Dear Queen, we have secret videotape of your son, Prince Charles. He has fallen in love with a kangaroo and some sheep. In fact, he has taken up living with an entire harem of animals. Lily, knock when you go out! Furry ones, feathered ones, it does not matter. As long as they smell like something stuck to a John Deere tire, the future king of England has the hots for it. Don't talk with your mouth full, mate. Mate, okay. The prince has gotten into doing some strange things with toilet paper. Rastus, get out of there! We can't even go there. You royal ones don't need another scandal. Unless you send us five million pounds, we are prepared to release this videotape to the British press. And we don't think you want that. Remember, the last time videotapes of your son got out to the press, the old prince never lived it down. Signing off, send the money, long live the king. Let's go to the magical, mystical land of Ireland, where there's some nasty animals with some really nasty habits. Meat Pit, the chain-smoking Irish chimp. This simian's a cigarette fiend. He's always got a lit one in his hand. Never has to worry about buying them. Bums him off the visitors. Handlers are concerned that Pit might come down with cancer. 
and they're trying to get him to cut back. You know what he thinks of that? There's a fistful of monkey dung. Again, slower. Handlers have just told Pitt they're switching him from camels to Virginia Slims and cutting him back to a pack a day. Oh yeah, smoke this, buddy. Our Irish Marlboro monkey has a nasty habit and an even nastier temper. Yeah, but it could be worse. At least he doesn't drink. Maybe Irish chimps are just troublemakers. Here's some exclusive footage. Alert! 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 Chip breakout from cell block 22. They are wild animals, and uh, in my opinion, they, uh, they would be dangerous uh, in the right circumstances. Yeah, like these. It's panic time. The chimps take over the parking lot, then raid the snack bar. Hey, hero boy, welcome to the planet of the apes. The chimps nearly empty the zoo. Handlers finally take measures to capture them. A vet nails him with tranquilizer darts. Two officials suspect foul play. Mm, that inside job. Well, we are now well aware that, in fact, these chimps did not escape. These chimps were released deliberately. To protect zoo-goers from this ever happening again, they put cheap locks on all the gates. Yeah, but the joke's on them. These nasty chimps will not be denied. We hear they're already planning their next break. Okay, what's worse than monkeys who smoke, throw crap, and start riots? Indonesian rip-off monkeys, oh yeah. These thieving monkeys roam in packs, and they prey on tourists. They'll pick your pocket. They'll steal your water. They'll even steal your money. And if you don't give them what they want, they have ways of getting it. Again, slower. Now, this woman spots a monkey eyeing her valuables. She tries to tell him to get lost. And them are fighting words. Well, watch this monkey go off on some poor dude. Our advice? Just remember, them monkeys is mighty good eating. So, you think Las Vegas is all showgirls, slot machines, and blue-haired old ladies? Well, close. But there's also some really nasty pets here. And when things get out of hand, someone's got to come in and restore law and order. Somebody was arrested last night. They had 17 cats, apparently as pets, and they're loose in the house. Easy, kids. Hi, guys. Holy cow. One, two, three, four, five, six. There was at least nine that I saw. It's kitty roundup time. Calm ones go first. Hi, guys. Oh, it's okay. We have the capability of bringing you this story in smell vision Yeah, but we won't do that to you. Eight under here. Okay, okay. We've got three legs. Okay, all right, all right. You're out. Well, that takes care of the friendly ones. Now let's try to catch the nasty ones. Okay, okay. <laughs> You're going to make everybody upset. These cats aren't going down without a fight. Okay, stop. I'm not very good. So cats seem to be tougher than dogs. Yes, cats are always tougher than dogs. Okay, we got, got you. And you. And that just leaves one. Yeah, take a look at that one. That's the mean one. More than the mean so one. how do you catch a really nasty cat? Okay, relax. With a nasty cat catching pole. It's okay. We're ready. Let her rip. Stop, stop, stop. Stop. For non-cat owners, spraying means one foul stench. I'm sure Siegfried and Roy know what we mean. Next one you get, I'm done. Whoosh. Oh yeah, critters can mess you up. Next on Maximum Exposure, a python with a thing for little girls. Note to self. Never beat on an elephant with a stick. Another note to sell. Gators got really sharp teeth. Another note, buy new bike. Oh, and one more note. Wife needs more beer. Check 
out more animals on the rampage on our Max X list of nasty, nasty critters. Max X, damn, we're hot. You're hooked up on maximum exposure. Chief Jim Billy keeps his finger in a jar. Looks like a pickle pick feed, doesn't it? Yeah, but how did his finger end up in a jar? Well, here's what happened. It was a day like any other day. Seminole Chief Jim Billy is working at a swamp safari in Florida. He's been messing with gators since he was five. He reaches underwater to try to hypnotize a seven-foot gator. You are getting sleepy. Well, it doesn't work. The chief rips his hand away. The crowd thinks it's part of the act. Show's over, folks. Let's look at that from a different angle. In 50 years, no gators ever hurt Chief Jim. Well, until now. Freeze that. Now check out his ring finger. What ring finger? It's gator food. So I can still wiggle it now, but it bit me here first, and then I guess grabbed here on the third turn. It snapped it off. Chief Jim Billy puts on a good face for the crowd before he bolts to the hospital. That's the part that was sticking out that I saw. Looks like a pickle pig feet, doesn't it? Yeah, but it tastes like chicken. This news flash just in. Hitting elephants with sticks may be hazardous to your health. That's right. This elephant gets to go back to the wild, but he's taking it slow. Well, because he's an elephant. What's the best way to get him to move? One way? Beat on him with sticks. Now, if that doesn't work, stick it in his ear. No, this is not a Max X approved method of moving an elephant. Elephant's thinking, if you're going to Q-tip me, I'm going to throw down some trunk. The trainer's lucky. He only gets a sprained neck. The P.O.'d pachyderm finally gets into the truck. So the next time you lose your patience and think about whacking your elephant with a sharp stick, don't. This just in from Oklahoma. Little girl plus snake equals bad idea. The Phillips girls are on vacation. Mommy Rosenda takes him to see the animals. He wanted to show us the pets that he had, so we went inside this little room. Don't touch the turtle. See a turtle? No, no, don't touch the turtle. Play with the albino python. Right, right here? Just a hey, mommy's brave. She wears the python like a feather boa. Daddy has an odd suggestion. Okay, let's see the snake kill the in the net ten grand. See you next year. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Three-year-old Alora wants to pet the snake too. You bit her. Let's see what happens in slow mo. Alora reaches up with her little hand. The snake thinks, hey, chow time. I didn't even realize what happened until after I saw the video. She bit her. Nobody even realized it at first. Like my husband, he, you know, was didn't think that it actually bit her. He thought that it was kind of funny. She bites you? No. And I was, you know, trying to show him the blood, and he videotaped it, and I told him to stop the tape. Don't film that. But when she tried to pet its face, Alora was lucky. The snake's fangs only scratched her fingers. What did the snake say? Them little kids is mighty good eating. Max X news item. Hippos kill more people in Africa than any other animal. But Kanita Walker keeps a hippo as a pet, a 900-pound pet named Mutlo. But from four months of age, I walked her to the river, first to a, a little rock pool, 
and she wouldn't go into it till I went in first. And unfortunately, she expected that of me later. Be careful. Oh, no, be careful. Be careful. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Let's see what happened. Mutlow tries to take a love bite out of his TV guy's leg. This hippo, for some reason, just, um, you know, didn't like me. <laughs> careful. Oh, be careful. Be careful. I had my camera in my hand, and I had turned the camera off, and I was turning around and walking away from the hippo. And all of a sudden, I heard this, and, and the cameraman said, look out. <laughs> and, uh, and he actually got a, a hold of these pants. Be careful. Be careful. <laughs> Maybe the hippo's looking for some hot hippo man action. And she has Brady in her sights. But later, Conita, she, she asked me several times, are you sure you're okay? And she, she let me know how serious it actually could have been. She said, you know, you could have lost your leg. So be careful when you're around hippos. They look cuddly, but never let a hippo try to love you up. This has been a Max X public service announcement. Here's one of the most amazing animal attacks you've ever seen. These are grizzly bears. One swipe of their paw can take your head off. They're extremely territorial, especially when it comes to protecting their young. These little ones are playing and lunching on dead caribou. The smell of a rotting carcass is just too much for this male to resist. He's coming to get the caribou and a couple of tasty cubs. Now, what's about to get in his way is a really angry mama bear. Welcome to Battle of the Sexes, nature style. All you guys out there who think the male's the strongest of the species, you're about to get a lesson in female dominance. At 600 pounds, the male far outweighs the female, but this is one bad mama. And she's about to mount an attack he'll never forget. Rather than kill their opponent, grizzlies will try to win through intimidation. So the next time you watch a grizzly fight, here's some things to look out for. Notice she's trying to stand up taller than him and stare him down. Then she tries to growl louder than him. He's turning his head. That means he's giving in. A quick right, a few more growls, and grizzly dude's calling it quits. Word to all you grizzlies out there. Don't mess with single moms. Max X is critterlicious. 200 pounds of raging bacon. A police dog gets a mouthful of cop. What's more fun than a barrel full of monkeys? One of them knocking over bikes. Waiter, there's a slug in my beer, and he's really thirsty. Drink him if you got him, and catch our Max X list of nasty, nasty critters. You got your groove on with Max X. You're in with maximum exposure. This escaped orangutan is going ape on the streets of Taipei, Taiwan. He's 160 pounds of irate primate. Goes by the name Ai Young. Hey, see that guy? He's the orang's owner. What did he do to get Ai Young so mad? <laughs> Must have been something really bad. That's one buff monkey. That better not belong to the local Hells Angels. Cops call a zoo for help. Maybe they don't have tranquilizer guns in Taiwan. They use blow guns. How cool is that? Ai Young is just too much mammal for the little dart. He goes back to playing the 800 pound gorilla. The zoo guy reloads. Maybe this one will take. After two hours of racing hell, Ai Young is going Betty by. 
Ah Young's rampaging days are over. Now it's time for him to chill at the zoo. That's Carl Taylor's car. But that ain't his dog. For some reason, this Rottweiler's taking a shine to Carl's car. I was pumping the gas, okay? Turn around, I fed the dog, I put the bill on there. He jumped in, he jumped on my clothes, and he won't leave. He gets a lot of police help. Must be a slow night in Houston. Now, they're hoping the dog wants to take a ride in the cruiser. Got the hood right there. But the Roddy won't budge. So a cop pokes him with a broom handle. Well, that doesn't work either. They try some rock and roll. The Roddy only has eyes for Carl. Now the dog wants to go for a drive. Why? Maybe it's Carl's sweet mullet. Oh, I ain't taking him home now. I didn't say take him home. I said see if you can get hold of his chain. Finally, it's animal control to save the day. They've got a snare stick. And it's off to the pound for the Roddy. For Carl, that's enough excitement for a lifetime. Dog damn. Clearwater, Florida, behind a Kmart. One of the customers, oh, I'm sorry, I mean a potbelly pig, is running loose. Animal control goes after it. They shoot it with a tranquilizer. Yeah, but the pig just runs off. One week later, the pig turns up in a garage having a beverage. Animal control is on the scene again. The porky perp starts to go quietly. Then... This won't be as easy as they thought. They drag the pig out. And now it's time to get it into the truck. But it's 200 pounds of furious pork versus 600 pounds of straining man. Next stop, animal shelter. Which is too bad, as we all know by now, them pigs is mighty good eating. <laughs> what happens when nasty critters meet? It goes a little something like this. Nasty critter number one, a bobcat. Nasty critter number two, a rattlesnake. The cat has the speed and quickness of Muhammad Ali. The Rattler is more like George Foreman, head down, straight ahead, one blow and you're dead. The cat strikes and then leaps out of the way of the snake. The cat strikes again. Wow, nice move. Hey, let's see that fancy footwork again. The cat hits the snake, then leaps three feet in the air to avoid being bit. The cat is taking control of this fight, landing blow after blow. He's just too quick for the rattlesnake. He's inflicting a lot of punishment. Again, the cat's dancing on air to get out of the way. Finally, the cat moves in for the kill, landing one blow after another. Combinations of rights, laughs, even Mike Tyson-style bites. The fight is finally over. The cat has killed the snake. And in the ultimate show of superiority, leaves it to rot in the desert sun. If you like vicious dog attacks, you're in for a treat. Police canine training, Caseyville, Illinois. Officers train their dogs to go after the padded bite sleeve. Officers Frank Moore and John Parisi are working with their police pooch, Barry. Frank's the one attacking Barry. Now, as far as the dog's concerned, Frank's a bad guy. They're giving Barry the courage test to see how he attacks. Frank steps off 200 yards so he can get a full head of steam when he runs at Barry. Barry's all riled up. He's ready to kick some bad guy butt. Got him. 
This is probably the worst uh, injury that I've had as a canine handler. I've had a couple of twisted ankles and, and that, but uh, this one here probably pretty much tops the list. Oh, oh, that is one good bite. Oh, ow, that's nasty. Hey, let's see that attack once again. Barry's supposed to go for Frank's bite sleeve, but he goes for Frank's chest. Right after the attack, I knew, uh, I was kind of embarrassed, but I knew that he got me good, and I needed to get back and get looked at. Frank's a tough guy. He drove himself to the hospital. Now Barry and Frank are both back in action. No hard feelings. Probably the biggest thing we learned from, from this is not to skimp on equipment. We've needed a bite suit for a long time, but now we've come to the conclusion that we have to have one. This is a bite suit. It might not look stylish, but it will prevent this. Dude, that bites. He's got him. We've got party animals on Max X. You ain't fear God, then that's a good looking goat. He drinks too much and acts like a pig. Sound like anyone you know? You think this snail was slow before he got drunk. And don't miss the really weird stuff on our Max X list of nasty, nasty critters. Who's your Max X daddy? Howdy, partner. It's maximum exposure. Saddle on up and mosey on down to Lajitas, Texas, where they do things a little bit different, like elect this goat to be their mayor. Clay Henry Jr., he's a good old boy, or a good old goat. He loves to kick back with a few cold ones. This old goat drinks like a true politician. I can't believe I have this on film. Yeah, but he is the mayor. So he'll trash his executive office all he wants. All the people in this boring little town agree. That's a mighty fine looking goat, boy. We've got more animal drinkers. This is Buster the Pig. Buster loves drinking beer. He lives on St. Croix in the U.S. Virgin Islands and hangs out at the Montpelier Hut Domino Club, where he puts it away. But hey, Buster sticks to non-alcoholic brew. Because, you know, he doesn't want to end up all fat and bloated. It's bad enough you gotta share your beer. But with a snail? And he's a big old British snail. He's getting beer antennas. Hey, come here often? His snail eyes are glazing over. He doesn't know when to quit. Hey, slug, get off of my beer. Now it's a chug off between the mayor, Buster, and the slug. The mayor's in great drinking shape, and he's the favorite. And they're off. The mayor's the front runner, he takes the lead. Buster pulls ahead. He's a drinker. Meanwhile, the slug brings up the rear. No surprise, because he's a lazy uh, slug. But the mayor's used to tight races. He takes the lead. It's the mayor. Buster, the mayor, Buster, and the mayor wins. The mayor guzzles victory from the jaws of defeat. Buster places second, and stumbling across the finish line, it's the slug. This cat doesn't have a drinking problem. He has an eating disorder. He's Kimmy. 46 pound cat. The Guinness Book of World Records says he's the world's fattest cat. Kimmy's weakness? Biscuits. Lots of them. Kimmy sometimes needs help getting around. But his owner doesn't realize that what Kimmy really needs is a diet. Oh no, I think he's quite able and capable of getting around. Uh, seems to be no problem with him. Well, except that this kitty eats like a pig. We're coming back with the baddest animals we've got. A 
our Max X list of nasty, nasty critters. Warning, strange and truly nasty animals ahead. You have achieved the Max X list. Number two, Honolulu. A day at the circus. Boring and predictable, right? Wrong. Oh my god. Not when an elephant goes berserk. Oh my god. Gail Shaleski was there with her daughters. It doesn't seem real while it's happening to you. Because it's the kind of thing you see on TV that somebody else lived through. And all of a sudden we saw the curtain billow, and we heard some noise, and the elephant came through the curtain, and the lights were down, who was on the floor. It looked like there was a rag doll tied to the elephant's leg. Those rag dolls are the elephant's trainer and its groomer. It's like the elephant's playing kickball with them. Now, the trainer tries to stop Tyke, but Tyke shoves him down like a bully at a playground. And tried to gore him, and since she didn't have any tusks, she just squished him, squished his chest with her forehead. Oh, man, the audience just freaks. Watch out, Bobby! Ah! Tyke heads outside, where another trainer tries to get her to chill. Well, that doesn't work. The cop car splits. That's a good idea. Then the circus publicist tries to lock her in, but Tyke smells freedom. She goes after the guy. So to save the guy's life, the police open fire. They warn people down on the road. Cops are forced to kill the elephant. Forced to Spain knows all about elephants. You can push those, ele those animals too far. They're very dangerous. They're extremely dangerous. These are 10,000 pound, 9 foot tall animals. They're very intelligent and they very, very rarely make mistakes. When an elephant goes after somebody like that, it's intentional. So what made Tyke snap? Well, no one knows. But she snapped big time. She might have just been scared. Yeah, everyone was scared. And this encounter could only end in tragedy. And number one on the X list. It's so flippin' strange. We really need a strange guy, Victor Mason, to explain it. I've been living in Indonesia for a good many years. And I've heard of a family in Bandung that is at most bizarre and has a peculiar way with snakes. Oh, hello. May I come in? Oh, my goodness. Good grief. This is the place. I say, I've got to watch where you put your feet. This seems to be a very large family, and there must be hundreds of snakes in here. God heavens. Kenapa tinggal sama-sama ular, seperti ular. I'm asking him why he's living here with all these snakes. Karena memang udah merupakan dari satu terbiasa dari usia... He just basically loves snakes and he keeps them because he's interested in them and all his family are. But they are used scientifically too. They do extract toxins from them. Uh, these are all deadly poison snakes. Uh, so there is the medicinal aspect as well. Yeah, this is freaky. That's a king cobra. Very nasty. Yeah. Oh, she had that this as a Christmas present when she was little, this particular snake here. Um, they don't get toys in this family, apparently. They get snakes and scorpions. So this is your own, it's his own special scorpion and it's his own pet snake. And uh, come on, bye. 
Yeah, they said they're the very best of friends. Oh man, this is weird. Can I put that gig in? Uh, I'm asking him, are all these snakes poisonous? And he assures me that they are. They said uh, she's been given some antibodies already. So they do bite. He's squeezing the venom out of the snake's venom sacs. Yeah, I think um, one thing we have to appreciate here is this family is absolutely dedicated to snakes. Um, I wouldn't recommend this to every family. Yeah, and you thought your family was strange. Uh, this is definitely getting weirder. But you look what happened to this poor chap. He got very badly bitten by a cobra the other day. And this is what, two weeks ago, do a mingo young lalo. It's still going to take a long time to heal up. It doesn't look nice. Selling snake venom's fine. But have these folks ever heard of cages? They have 12 children. I guess that's handy in case they lose a couple. Well, it's time for lunch, and Victor isn't the only guest. Dude, this isn't just weird. It's gross. Yeah, Bisha. Oh! Who's this for? Who's having this? Yeah, this for you. All oh, right, thank you. Well, I'm, I'm sitting down here having a quiet family lunch, but I seem to be surrounded by all sorts of things. Snakes, scorpions. I don't know whether to just grin and bear it or pretend I'm not noticing. Can I have a little bit of scorpionless fish? You've got to be jolly careful what you're picking up in your spoon here. Ah. Ah. Where do you think you're going, my friend? I'm kind of losing my appetite. Uh, I have never... There's a scor scorpion that wants a nice cup of tea. Um, quite honestly, I have never been entertained at a luncheon party like this before. What I really need is a very strong drink. So what else can I say but bon appetit. So the children are now going to have their afternoon nap. But they're going to have their nap in a bed with a difference. Okay, I'm freaking here. As part of the familiarization process, the children always sleep with the snakes. I've seen some strange bedfellows and some very strange things in my time. But this really takes the cake. Have a lovely sleep, my darlings. We told you they'd be nasty, nasty critters. Maximum exposure. We're out. Darling Daughter, the family that the family will never forget. Turn it up with Peter Falk, Diane Weeks, and Emily Lloyd in Cookie, tomorrow at noon on UBN 11.